Hey everybody, it's Eric Meyer, NASA Great Lakes. We're uh, going to do a quick video on uh, smoothing and smoothing your data. And um, you can learn a bit, little bit about that in the pluses and minuses. So, so here's what we see here. We got our typical three channels, GPS long G's, GPS lat G's, and our um, uh, GPS speed. And uh, we have a, a bunch of what they call noise right here, right? And a lot of people new to data acquisition have a challenge with this, and they're like, man, I don't really know how to understand it. So either a buddy tells them or they're experimenting around, and they go down in here and they do stuff like this. They say, you know what, I'm going to smooth this data. And I want you to keep your eye down here for a second. You ready? Did you see that? You've got rid of all that what's called noise in the data. And you now look at this and you go, oh man, I can totally see what's going on now, right? It's so much easier to read, right? So much easier to read. There's my, uh, I'm getting 1.33 lat G's right there. Oh man, that's awesome. And up here I'm getting 1.3 right here. And it's easy to see because it's all nice and flat. It's not all spiky, right? Remember when it's spiky, I'm going to hit the, uh, the G key on the keyboard. It's going to take me down here. I'm going to go to this lateral G, which is down here, and I'm going to unsmooth it. We're going to look at it. And we're going to go, oh, man, I don't know how, what kind of lat Gs I'm getting here, right? Because part of it here is 1.42, and part of it down here is, what is that, 104? You know, quite a bit less. Um, here's a big one right here. Am I getting, am I getting one, almost two Gs right here? Or am I getting 1G, right? So I better smooth it so I can read it easier. Well, here's the challenge with that, okay? If we look, or, or when we look, at all these breaking uh, uh, indicators, longitudinal G, breaking is below the line. It's negative. You can see that right there. Minus 1, minus 8, 4, right? And these are typically accelerating uh, G's above here. The rate of acceleration is greater. And you got to be careful, by the way, when a GPS, excuse when a GPS longitudinal trace goes from right here, minus seven, nine, to right here, that doesn't mean you're on the throttle, right? That doesn't mean you're on the throttle. Look down here where my hand is and see what that means, it's a lesser rate of braking. Okay, because we're still slowing down right here, right? We're just slowing down at a uh, at a slower rate. And you can see that right here in this bend. So we're still slowing down. That doesn't mean we're on the throttle. This over here means we're in the throttle. See, we're going faster, right? So don't get caught up in the in the idea that just because this goes up, it means throttle. Guys, that's that's above this line right here. And also be careful if you're uh, if you're reading this and you're going downhill if it's a really steep downhill, which they have because it's going to give you a, a inflated number, right? Because you're accelerating down. Like there's some downhills here, as is there's some uphills right here, as there's a downhill right here and an uphill right here, right? So be careful when you read that. You kind of got to know the track, which is why it's helpful if you've never been to a track before to put in altitude so that you know that this is a big monster drop. This is a monster drop of 1,065 to, wow, 1,065 plus 1,570. This is an 88-story drop right here. Eight stories, right? And if you look at, at these acceleration Gs and say, man, I'm rocking it out at 0.27 positive acceleration Gs, that's a little bit skewed by the fact it's downhill. You're getting gravity to help you. So if you're new to track and you're analyzing the data, um, make sure you might want to click on that altitude to, to understand if it's flat or it's uh, or it's hilly. So <clears throat> here's our uh, here's what we want to be careful of when smoothing data. Uh, you may know this already because I try to state this quite a bit. This is where typically everybody has an opportunity to go faster when you first start looking at your data. 
This is the value of a brake pressure sensor, which very few people have. And the next best thing is to look at the somewhere in your longitudinal trace, your negative, which shows when you're braking, right? This is the rate of D cell. You can see that this magnitude of this is when the GPS speed, right? The GPS speed is falling, right? So up here, boogieing down the back straight here, it's really nice and fast. We're going 115. We jump on the brakes, right? And this shows our D cell G's. This is when our uh, this is when we're feeling the pressure on our chest from our belts uh, uh, holding us in, right? Um, so here's the challenge. Um, some of you savvy folks know right there that that's barely lifting the foot off the brake pedal when we're, um, when we're downshifting and we're heel towing, right? And it doesn't look like much, right? And you look over here and you're like, you know what, that, that doesn't happen over here. And let's look at some other braking areas. Well, you know, it doesn't happen here. You know what? That's something I don't really need to work on because I look how tiny that is. That's tiny. That's only a few feet. Okay? But here's the underlying scenario that we don't see. I'm going to push the letter, press the letter G to get us closer. I'm going to go to the longitudinal acceleration. That was that one right there. I'm going to hit apply. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to unsmooth it. I'm going to hit apply. And okay, and we got all this noise back, right? But here's what we see within the data. And this is what you want to see. And this is opportunity. The magnitude that this driver, this is normal. Guys, this is normal. You do this. If, if you're looking at data for the first time, I guarantee you do this. I guarantee you do this. To what degree, we don't know. But this is opportunity. When you find stuff like this, you need to smile and you go, yeah, I found something to work on. I found something to practice to get better. In this particular case, the car has a capacity to break at 1.2, 1.3 negative Gs, which is great, right? However, there's a part right here where we're just a little over half of that, where we lift our foot off the brake. And if we look at the distance of that, which I'm hitting the space bar, oopsie, I'm hitting the right there, and we go over to here. If we look in the lower right hand corner, it says uh, 54 feet, I'm going to do that again so you can see it. I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to measure this distance to right here. It's actually 60 feet. See in the lower right hand corner, it says 60.77, it says lower right hand corner, GPS distance in feet. See to the 12,252, that's the spot that we're on the track. See to the right of that, 60.77 feet. And just above that is 0.516, or half a second. Guys, there's half a second of where we covered 60 feet that for some reason we let our foot off the brake. Almost 50%, about 40% off of the braking power, braking uh, force of our uh uh, of our foot. Gang, this has an opportunity to have more efficient brake zone, which, which means you can make it shorter. And I'll, I'll suggest to you it's at least by a half a brake marker. So our braking zone is uh, has the potential to shorten it up maybe by a half braking marker. And you'd have the opportunity to brake a half a marker later, or maybe brake more gently at the same spot. Uh, brake to a faster speed, get off the brakes a half a brake marker earlier and really roll that in, which is which is really important for this corner. This is a high entry speed roll corner that you can really roll it up and track out, get back on the throttle, use all the track on the track out to go up this hill right here and jam down into turn one. There's a lot of uh, opportunity that people miss out um, because it is uphill right here and is uphill right here. And take a look at that. Gang, you want to use all that track on the track out. And if you're doing it right, you're rolling so hard it feels like you're flying off the track. It does. That's where you need to uh, attack that bad boy. There's a lot of time right here. 
there's a lot of time for this driver right here. This driver's great, very solid and confident on the brakes. However, they lift up on heel toe, which is normal, which is normal. And because it's normal, I'm going to look for trends. I'm going to look in other brake zone areas. Oh, looky there. See that there? Remember, we couldn't see that when this data was smooth. So let's go back here so you know we're on track. We'll take this off. It's going to be a brake zone, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Another brake zone opportunity. Same kind of opportunity, gang. This is normal. Look, there's one here. This is normal. Looky there. There's one there. It's normal. You don't know you do this until you look at your data. And if your data is smoothed, hit the G key, longitudinal acceleration. If your data is smoothed, you don't see that, right? You see this little tiny guy down here. So be careful if you're smoothing data or somebody's sharing data with you and that smoothing channel is on um, because you're going to hide opportunity to get better. My advice, the one action item I'd have for my new buddy Mert the next time he goes any track, not just pit race or, or beaver run, was to be very, uh, very conscious of how much his brake foot is lifting off of the brake when he goes to blip the throttle. You really want to focus on that and say, I'm trying to keep the ball, the, the, the ball of my right foot on the pedal as I blip the throttle and uh, not lift it off, which is what you see here, which is what you see here, right? Which is what you see here. And uh, there's some tricks to this. Um, the old spec Miata trick is to literally stick your head down in your footwell and grab that pedal and bend it over that metal bar that has the little plate on the bottom and just literally bend it over and get it closer to your throttle pedal or pull your throttle pedal closer to your uh, brake pedal or you can get one of those uh, little Sparco there's a couple people that make them those little extended pads on the bottom and you offset it so that you bring that pad more to the, the brake pad more to the right closer to the uh, throttle pedal to make it easier to blip. Well, more importantly, just be aware of what your brake foot is doing. Every time you go out on track, every time you go out on track, there's probably, on a long track like this, there's probably one second of uh, lap time because it happens in all these places, right? This isn't just a one turn issue. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. And that's where you find time. Guys, there is no, Ross Bentley tells us, there is no silver bullet. There is no one trick that if you apply, you're lightning fast, you say five seconds. It's a bunch of little things. And in this case, it's about two-thirds of the way into the brake zone where you're doing a downshift where you're slightly lifting your pedal over a half a second or 60 feet. So look for this in your data, specifically uh, in the longer brake zones, like going into turn seven at mid-Ohio where you might have a couple of downshifts, right? And uh, start working on it because everybody has it. Everybody does it, you're normal. And when you find stuff like this, you should rejoice because you found areas to improve. This isn't a bad thing, this is a great thing. I'm Eric Meyer, we'll talk to you soon.